many, many things have come together and we are now going to talk about the fundamental theorem of matrixology, brackets, linear algebra. Um, we'll use Inigo, the two by three matrix we've been studying. One, two, two, four, one, two. That's kind of a background thing. I'm going to give you the big picture for Inigo right now and then the abstract version. So these are two very important things. There's a specific matrix, has a specific kind of big picture story. And then there's this more abstract one, which I've been talking about through the course. Uh, fundamental theorem comes next, and then we will get on to solving AX equals B when B is not in the column space, right? So that's when we need to approximate things. That will lead us to the normal equation, which is magnificent. Getting there. So many good things happen. Okay, so I've written up, I've set things up um, a fair way here. So Inigo sans vectors in three dimensions, right? It's two by three. X lives in three dimensions. Multiplied by A, you end up with a two-dimensional vector. And what we figured out, we figured out column space, row space, null space, or right null space, and left null space. So over here, three dimensions, X1, X2, X3. And column row space is this piece, any multiple of one, two, one, right? So I've put a basis here for it. Okay, good. So let's take a vector that's sitting in, we'll do it like this, I guess. So uh, maybe this. Okay, so here's a vector in, in uh, row space. Let's take this as X. And then over here, there's none of this is to scale or anything. So here's, his column space. This is the only place a times x. Column space is the only place that uh, we can get right. A times x has to equal some multiple of one two. Big deal. So let's say this x gets sent like this to this one, right? A times x equals b in column space. If that's true. And then we'll annotate it a little bit. So let's make this X R for row. It might be hard to see R for row. All right, let me make that clear. This is R for row. Uh, we started that with as P particular, right? Also XP for particular. P for particular. I'll put that in small letters there, all right? It's the one that solves, uh, will solve our problem, if that's possible. But we're saying that B is actually in column space. Let's say that this is B. We're thinking about this problem now. Well, we could add one of these, we could add a vector that's in this plane here, uh, which is the null space. The null space is described, we had a basis for it. Any combination of the linear combination of these two vectors. We figured out that the basis, uh, well, it's true, the basis vectors for null space and the basis vectors for, column uh, for row space are at right angles. So that's what this little, right, this little piece here, that's a little at right, right angles too. That's important. So let me maybe at right angles too. That's sitting there. So any vector here, and we're going to call it uh, just generally, we'll say this is x null. That one, and it doesn't have to be dashed, so that's, that's a vector. So that one gets sent to, well, it's a null vector. They get sent to a times x n equals zero. And there's also uh, x h for homogeneous. I know that for the homogeneous solution. So that's just notation, particular homogeneous, and we'll say row and null. So in this case, because null space is not zero, and because um, B is in the column space, there are, there is a solution. And in fact, there are infinitely many solutions because we can always add something, anything we want from the null space. So maybe let me put this up here. A 
times x, well, a times x in general is a times, go wrong, a times x uh, rho plus x, but um, null, the null one and the row one, and this is equal to b. Right, and there are infinitely many solutions. Because of this, infinitely many solutions, null space of A is not equal to zero. Right, because this uh, solution exists. Because B is in the column space of A. Groovy. Okay, that's this piece. We've seen a few other things that are here. The dimensions add together. So this is null space is, uh, is two dimensional. Uh, row space is one dimensional. One plus two is three. Uh, column space is one dimensional and left null space is one dimensional. Right. So if the vector was out here, no solution. We can approximate it. That's what's coming next. Right. We'll, we'll get the piece that's as close as possible. We'll be able to get a better thing would be to do this. We'll say that. We'll be able to get this part of the vector and we'll miss whatever's in perpendicular, what is um, in the left null space, perpendicular to column space. All right, big thing. Think about this. Here's the abstract picture. I have to add some pieces to it. Uh, so the idea is these are subspaces. So this is Rn on this side and Rm on that happens to me a lot. Rm on this side. Right, so A is sending three-dimensional vectors to two dimensions. And when you think about that, there has to, it has to lose information, right? You can't put three dimensions into two, so it's squishing it. So there has to be a null space. That's one way to think about that. Uh, so let's take a vector here, uh, x rho, and we have a vector here. This is x null. And we've got our vector b over here. Let's say it's here. The idea of this picture means that it's in, it's in the subspace. This is the subspace, right? And so these, these boundaries are porous, right? This, they keep going. That will slowly make more sense. We put a plane because it's all our brains can handle and it's more complicated than a line. That's, that's, this is sort of indicating a, a, the start of a plane. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So. This is a times the same as we had before equals b and then this one gets sent to zero a times uh, x null is equal to zero and maybe it's easy to put on this picture so if we add these two together right so let's say this is x right this is this is uh, x equals i'm going to add them together r plus x n then that also gets sent to b that's a big this is the this is a oh boy sorry this is a big deal that's a new feature so this is a times x is equal to b All right so here's our our row vector, there's one of them that gets sent to here that's special. And then we can add anything here. We can add whatever we want. Right? And that's why we get infinitely many solutions. If B is outside of here, it's out here. No solution. B is here. No solution. We can't make it at all. Right? These are things we can't reach. And the reason we can make part of the part of any vector. If you've got if someone hands you a B, you can make the part of B that lives in column space, but not the part in left null space. And that is the next step. Okay. Uh, I want to add down here. Inigo actually sends a line to a line and all it does is stretch it, right? So it has to change it and put it, takes a line over here in three dimensions and then just slaps it over here in a two dimensional space. And in fact, an ego is, is really actually like the square root of 30. It'll take a while to get to that, but uh, that's, that's true. It's going to take this line and then stretch it 
but there's all this rotation and putting in a different space that's all part of this as well. So that's, that's cool. Okay, so now we're just gonna put everything together. We have to add a couple more definitions. So here's our old one. Uh, so the definitions are on the left here, and then we'll have this fundamental theorem of matrixology. So uh, if the inner product of two vectors is zero, then we say they're orthogonal. That means they're at right angles, right? That's fine, that's, a, that's an old thing. So they're at right angles. And that's our little symbol for it, X and Y. This is our, we're using our, our matrixology version of it, which is we have a row vector and a, a column vector, and we talked about transposes, so this is the same as, if you take the transpose of this, you still get zero on the right-hand side and the left-hand side. I wanna add, I don't wanna make a miss, but this is Y transpose X as well, same thing. So now we're gonna lift this up a little bit and we're going to say uh, two subspaces in a vector space are orthogonal. If all the vectors in one of them is, is uh, orthogonal to every vector in the other. So that's clear uh, for this example, right? These, these two, well, it's not drawn very well, but these, these two subspaces are just two lines and their basis vectors are here, one, two, and minus two, one. They're at right angles. So you can take any vector in the column space of A and any vector in the left null space of A, right angles, same here, any, any vector here in the plane, any vector here in the, which is the null space, and any vector in the column, uh, row space, which is a the line. They're at right angles to each other. Okay, so then we're gonna say that those subspaces are orthogonal to each other. Fine, and then we'll do one more step. If their dimensions add together to give you the dimension of the ambient space, which is true in these cases, Right, so uh, two plus one is three, and one plus one is two. Then we call them orthogonal complements because any vector can be represented as uh, a vector from, a sum of a vector from each subspace. These subspaces are special to A, right? You have some A, it induces, it sh there's some, there are these four subspaces, you have to figure, what the, figure them out. And then they have this very nice property that actually any vector in over here, Rn, and any vector Rm, you should, when we're talking about this Ax equals B problem, you should write them as a vector that lives in row space plus a vector that lives in null space. And the B that we're trying to get to has a part that lives in column space and a part that lives in left null space, which we cannot reach, sadly. It's okay. So that's... So we'll have this notation, we'll have S and its orthogonal complement. So you could take a line and say, what is its orthogonal complement? In two dimensions, it's another line. In three dimensions, it's a plane. In four dimensions, it's a three-dimensional subspace, the width. The orthogonal complement for the R2 in R2, right? The subs, because we have the trivial subspace, the orthogonal complement, well, which subspace, uh, such that you have to take dot products, right? Or the inner products, Gives you zero every time, it's a zero, it's just a zero. So for a vector space, there's the vector space and the zero element as a subspace. They are the extreme version, the extreme orthogonal complements. Okay, okay, and we'll say this, this is this adding together, right? So it's a direct sum, so we take a vector in S and a vector in its orthogonal complement, add them together, and if we keep doing that in every possible way, we'll get the vector space. Alternatively, we can say we have a vector in the vector space. We can express it as a vector, as I said before, in the subspace and plus a vector from its orthogonal complement. Boom, okay. Okay, yes, all those words are there. Maybe not enough colors, but um, right. So we say there we have this and that's a big deal. Okay, okay, all the words are there, yeah. Okay, fundamental theorem of matrixology, big deal. Hmm. So we're writing down things we know at this point about the four fundamental subspaces. The dimension of the column spaces R, the dimension of the left null spaces M minus R, right? They're on the right-hand side of our big picture. They break up RM, there's the M here. The dimension of column space of A transpose, which is row space, is R and the dimension of the null space is N minus R. So again, these things add together. So let me put this, this is column space. This is the 
strange business that has left null space. Then we have row space and um, null space. And by the way, it should be clear, the, we're, we're just going in this direction, right over here, we're just going in this direction, boom, 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 but everything goes back the other way as well. Right, we can flip it all around. There's nothing wrong with doing that. We can, we can say, you know, we can solve the problem A transpose Y equals something, C. Don't want to get too confusing. But that it's completely symmetric, right? Deeply, so let's add that point, symmetry. And unfortunately, left null space is on the right-hand side of the page. So it's bad, all right. I want to put this somewhere. Unfortunately, it's algebraic, right? It's because the Y is on the left-hand side of A for Y transpose A equals zero. Uh, left, so that's just a, we didn't win that little piece. Left null space is on the right of the page. Okay. And the right null space, which is just null space, is on the other side. Okay, good, 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 good. Uh, let's finish our things here. So we go further. We can say that um, column space and left null space are orthogonal complements of each other. Row space and null space are orthogonal complements of each other. They live respectively in Rm and Rn, where A is M by N. M is the number of rows, N is the number of columns. And the bases of both of them both of these two sets of orthogonal complements combine to give you a basis for uh, the ambient vector space, right? So back here, a, a basis for R2 is a basis for column space plus a basis, plus the basis for left null space, whatever that is. And in this case, yeah, one, two, minus two, one. They're at right angles to each other, so they have a nice property. There's no guarantee that the vectors with in a basis or at right angles, and in fact, these ones aren't. We're going to get to that soon. We would like that. And the best thing uh, would be to just get that for free. We will get it later on. Really nice when we do the right thing. Okay, so that's everything I think so far. So there's more. There is more. I said this should be mostly. Mostly. Uh, more at the end of the course. We have to go and think about a whole bunch of other crazy things and see some beautiful, beautiful things. All right. Big, big deal. That puts us uh, well into um, where we need to go to understand the big picture. The next is going to be a sort of a, a series of these three matrices, man in black, uh, Inigo and Fezzik, where they just really looked at in great detail. And uh, then we'll have a table summarizing the possible sh shapes of uh, A and the possible uh, reduced row echelon forms and for A and A transpose. And that gives you almost everything you want, basically. But there will be more later, of course. Okay. Go. Go.